Hi, Peter Charles here of Hooked for Life Fly Fishing, and today let's talk about fly lines once more. I've already addressed this subject once, but I keep running across it over and over again, so I'm going to try and explain it in a different way, and hopefully we'll get to some understanding going. If I sound a bit grumpy about this, it's because I keep running across this over and over again. I deal with the same arguments, and it's like, please, it's simple. Okay, can we get past this idea of the AFTMA system? It's only designed for a very limited set of circumstances, and if you're fishing beyond that, you need to do something different. Now, brief hif history of the AFTMA line rating system. It was created somewhere around 1960, and the American um, Fishing Tackle Manufacturers Association came up with this standard uh, to handle the new polyvinyl chloride lines that are coming out on the market, the plastic lines. Because up to then it had been silk lines, and silk lines have been rated by diameter, not by weight. So they came up with a different system, and they picked 30 feet, because that looks to be about the maximum trout cast we would normally make. So we're talking about trout fishing here, okay? And Casting a 30 foot of fly line plus the leader to a wading trout would be, you know, typical. You know, that's not unusual. We often fish even shorter distances. So that's great for trout fishing. But how about if you're chucking a clouser 90 feet to uh, a striped bass? Uh, it, is it still relevant? The answer to that is no. So we need specialized fly lines that do the job better. So, you know, I've got a standard trout line here, which is built to the AFTMA standard. And here is a, an airflow cold water salt sniper line that is nowhere near the AFTMA standard. Okay, so this is a four weight, but this is still a well, nine weight. Yes, it's a nine weight. So let's talk about this in, in relevant terms. What does it really mean for us? And has the, have the manufacturers thrown the AFTMA scale out the window? The answer to that is no, they haven't. They've just expanded upon it. So we've got more choice than we used to have. And because we need more choice, because we're doing more and different things with fly rods that we never did before when the AFTMA standard was created. I mean, who, who fished for a striped bass with a fly rod in 1960? Might have been one or two guys out there somewhere. But, you know, it, it was all spinning gear. So, you know, to go out there and trace after pike, musky, uh, you know, tarpon, in doing this all with fly rods was unheard of when that standard was created. So, I've got this little chart up here that I produced a bazillion years ago. And what it does is it looks at double taper lines. Good old AFTMA accurate DT slash 8 slash F, you know, double taper fly lines, floating fly lines. And it calculates the weight at different points of the uh, line. So let's take the nine weight column here, or the row I should say. So it's 240 grains of 30 feet. That's the AFTMA standard, okay? And I'm allowing for an eight foot front taper on that line. And the taper does have a bearing on the weight further down, you know, beyond 30 feet. At 35 feet, this line is now 284 grains. When you've got 40 feet, it's at 328. And at 45 feet, it's 372 grains. So at 45 feet, that double taper line weighs four, 372 grains. This is 375. Get the picture? This is 30 foot long, 375 grains. That double taper line, AFTB accurate line at 45 feet, is 372 grains. So if you're aerializing 45 feet of double taper nine weight line, you're handling the same weight as this, exactly the same weight. Because 372 is within, well within the tolerance for this line. This line is optimally, uh, nominally I should say 375, but could be a little bit less, could be a little bit more. So it's the same weight. So when people say, well, a nine weight can't handle all that weight, well, you think they can't handle 45 foot of double taper? Of course they can, easily. It's usually the angler that can handle 45 feet of double taper, but the rod certainly can. Even a cheap nine weight from a department store probably would handle 45 foot of a double taper line. So the rod has no problem handling it. 
the problem is us. Yeah. Realizing that the weight we're casting, you know, 30 feet long, this head, it should weigh, in theory, 240 grains, so it weighs 375. But all it's doing is taking the mass of the double taper line and compressing it from 45 feet into 30 feet. That's it. And they do it to make casting easier because a lot of us can't handle 45 foot of double taper line out of the guides. Plus, when you compress that mass into a shorter package, it will cast much bigger flies, will handle the wind better. So that's what's going on here. All the fly line companies are doing is taking, you know, a certain length of line and sort of squishing it, compacting it, changing the taper a bit, and creating a line that will handle the wind, handle big flies, go far, and allow us to tackle other species. So the next time you hear somebody going, oh, that's an 11 weight, you know, oh, actually a 12 weight. <laughs> that's a 12 weight. Well, the reality is it's still a nine weight line. It's just been compressed. And so, you know, don't go by the label. It says nine weight on it. Believe it. It's a nine weight. You can fish it as a nine weight. You can put it on a nine weight rod. A little brief little story, and then we'll call it quits for the video. Oh, when I was 50, my wife bought me a lovely diamondback 10 weight saltwater rod. So I went out and bought a 10 weight Cortland pike line for it. And I thought, perfect. You know, I, I go pike fishing with this rod, it's going to be fantastic. And I'll go striped bass fishing and, and I can use the same line. Brilliant, I'm good to go. Well, this line was bang on 280 grains over 30 feet, and the head was 30 foot long. So there it is right there on the 10 weight scale. 10 weight, 280. And it cast like crap. Up to 50 feet, it was fine. Get past 50 feet, and I was struggling. Get to 60 feet, it's falling out of the air. If I try to go further than that, it's crashing, it's ugly, and I'm working hard, and I'm going, like, I can cast? What's wrong with this? Well, when you look at an eight weight, see, 40 feet is 287 on double taper. Well, guess what? I put that Cortland on my eight weight rod and it went like a rocket. And it, like the penny dropped. Is that to cast far, I needed more weight than what that 10 weight, AFTMA accurate 10 weight would provide. Really, that 10 weight line in modern terms is an eight weight or even a seven. So it was that you know, moment of clarity for me 51 years ago that said, you know what? This rod really needs a lot more weight if I want to cast far. And that, that AFTMA accurate Cortland Pike line was only good up to about 50 feet, which fits with the AFTMA scale, which was designed around 30 feet. So think about it. it, it it's doing its job. It's behaving the way it's supposed to. But you can't get much further than 50, 60 feet out of it because there's just simply not enough mass in the fly line to load the rod deeply enough to send it on its way. And then you have to thrash it like mad and then things fall apart. So that's the whole point. In order to cast far or cast big flies, we need weight. And we need lines like this, you know, whether Rio, uh, Outbound, or SA Titan, whatever you're using, or the Airflow Snipers. They're all designed to do the same job. And so go buy what's on the label. If it says it's a nine weight, trust it, it's a nine weight. So let's, you know, put the AFTMA scale in its place. It's still valuable, it's still useful, but it doesn't cover everything. And, and so, you know, the next time you go out shopping and somebody's ranting about this AFTMA scale, say, yeah, yeah, that's cool. And then buy one of these. Cheers.